Hello, happy Sunday, and welcome to this week's oil painting time lapse. This painting is titled Silent Serenade, and I'm super excited to be able to share this progress with you guys. If you'd like to check out a 30 minute long version of this video, along with instructional commentary, color mixing guidelines, and progress photos, and more fun rewards, please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash happydartist. So before I begin discussing today's topic of discussion, I would actually like to devote some time to talk about the background story and some of my creative process behind this painting. Um, I know you guys are pretty much used to my usual format of playing the time lapse in the background while I devote most of the video to talking about one topic regarding um, art and the art industry and art careers. but. I actually really miss talking about my work, um, so today I just wanted to give you a little glimpse into kind of what goes on in my brain and the background story I like to assign my characters. Um, for this piece, it is titled Silent Serenade because I feel like it's the story of two moths who have fallen in love with this woman. and. Um, moths, as you know, don't really make noises, so um, a serenade, in my opinion, also is kind of like a way to court someone or to show love, um, you know, based on like the old fairy tales of like a prince serenading a princess. So I wanted to give that kind of a feeling, almost like an old romantic love story feeling um, to this piece. and. Actually, partway through the piece, as I'm doing here, you see I actually painted over the hand and decided to decapitate her and add some cool um, special effects showing that she has like a hollow body that is stuffed with flowers and beautiful foliage. And part of the reason is the backstory. So as I was working on this piece, I wasn't super satisfied with um, the visual metaphor that I had created. To me, it was almost too fashion focused and I wanted to give a more interesting background story. So instead of just having her, you know, posed in a very beautiful manner with her head resting on her neck, I just wanted to like open her up and show that like on the inside she has all this life and this beauty and um, the flowers are a metaphor of almost like her aura and her soul and the reason the moths are melting into her and so like attached to her is because they cannot resist the allure or the um, they cannot help but fall in love with her because she has such a beautiful spirit and um, to me I think it ended up being way more interesting this way rather than just having her pose with like a, her hand on her shoulder so I wanted to transition now into today's topic of discussion which is how to practice getting better at art and the things that you should keep in mind when, while you're practicing so that you can actually see relevant and significant progress. Um, I wanted to categorize it into two ways. So the first way to get better at art is by training your eye and the second way is by training your hands. So let's start with the first one. Training your eyes means basically getting better at detecting how something looks right or how something looks wrong. So a great example is anatomy or perspective if you're doing landscapes. Um, a person with a good eye will know when anatomy looks off or when their perspective looks off so that they know what to fix and what to improve. Because even the greatest masters can't get everything right on the first try, but because the masters have a good eye, they know which areas that they need to keep working on and keep developing, which eyes or which um, areas that they can keep because those areas are correct. So knowing how to detect when something looks off or when something looks good is having a good eye. Um, and the second one, training your hands, is basically training your muscle memory and practicing enough and working with like whatever medium you're working with so that you know how to properly carry out your vision. So if, for example, on your anatomy, your hand looks off, you know how to paint it properly or draw it properly. You know how to fix it. You know how to avoid like using too much paint or accidentally 
I don't know, like building up too much pencil wax, depending on what medium you use, or, um, you know, the proper techniques to draw certain lines, you know how much pressure to exert on the canvas when you're shading, um, things like that. So when I am practicing art, I always like to keep those two in mind. Um, having a hybrid of those two goals really helps me improve. And I think a really great example is actually what I'm doing right now in this video. I didn't have an exact reference of this concept. I didn't have a reference of a girl who was decapitated and floating above her torso that was stuffed with roses and hydrangeas. So I had to do a lot of guesswork. I had to fill in the blanks on my own and predict what this would look like if I were to actually see it in person. You know, like if I were to remove someone's head and place it above their bodies, like what shape would the body make? What would the perspective be? How would the flowers sit inside of her? Um, where would the flowers look darker? Where would they look lighter? Um, I'm not saying by any means that I executed this perfectly. There are so many flaws I see in so many areas I could have done better, but I won't get into them now because it'll be a huge tangent. But um, yeah, that's my eye skills that I had to really push and really exert when I was trying to carry this concept to life. And where I needed to really push my hand skills was determining how much paint to use when I was doing the flowers. So I was working in very thin layers and glazing them to bring out the vibrancy. Or, um, you know, determining how much medium to mix on my brush and how much white I wanted to use when I was working on the highlights. So those small nuances, those technical skills of how to work with the paint and work with the brush, um, those are hand skills. And whenever you work on any piece of art or practice, you're obviously getting better at both aspects, at both skills. But there are definitely different things you can do to work on each different skill. So a great way to work on your eye skills is by drawing or painting from life. Um, if you don't have you know, a model accessible to you, you could look in the mirror. Like if you're drawing a hand, instead of just looking at a reference photo of a hand, you can observe your own hand. You can you know, put your fingers in different poses. You can flex the muscles in your hands and look at the tendons and look at the anatomy behind it so that if you ever have to do guesswork or if you ever have to draw a hand where the reference isn't so good, um, you're familiar enough with the structure and nat anatomy of your hand that you can make the proper educated guess and still render it without always having to rely on your reference. And a great way to, you know, of course, um, practice your hand skills and your technical skills is just by doing exercises. You know, um, if you want to get better at painting in um, Alla Prima, you know, finding some videos on how to do that and doing several of them to practice. So yeah, I hope this short explanation can maybe help you guys supplement your practice sessions and help you look at practicing in a more productive way. All right, that about wraps up the video. Thank you guys so much for your support and for watching this. Um, I will have limited edition prints available at my shop at happyd-artist.com and I will catch you next week. Bye.